Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week I'm going to share some top cold weather hunting tips that I hope will help to keep your shooting on track right through the winter months. But first up, we're going to take a look back over some of our favourite shots that we've managed to catch on camera for the Air Gun Show over the last few years. We've got an extra third episode to run this month, so we thought we'd use it to look back over some of our favourite shots over the last three years of the Air Gun Show. Now, anybody who watches regularly will know that I take rested shots whenever I can. So, let's kick off with a rare freehand shot taken during a summer rabbit stalking session. This rabbit has stopped on the brow right ahead of me, and thankfully it hasn't made a dash for cover just yet. It's partially obscured, but the headshot is on. I know my Daystate Mark IV is more than up to the task, and I'm confident in the shot. Brilliant. First one of the session, that's a great start. Staying away from my comfort zone once again, this time I'm swapping my usual PCP for a Springer as I tackle grey squirrels that have homed in on a feeding station. The squirrel looks as though it's poised ready to hop up to the feed. I don't want to fluff the shot, so I take my time and wait for it to climb on before I get ready to settle the crosshairs onto its head. The brilliant Air Arms Pro Sport working its magic there. We'll stay with grey squirrels and this time it's one that's ventured out to raid a pheasant feeder just as I was starting to give up on what was turning out to be a very tricky session. I really enjoy my winter rat shooting, especially with night vision gear. Here, the ATN Excite proves the stealth and effectiveness of night vision tactics as I pick off a rat that thought it was safely tucked away in a hiding place inside a wall. Staying with the ratty theme, it's always a bonus to bag one when you're not really expecting to see them. This memorable scaly tail turned up at a grain feeder while I was waiting it out for squirrels. And sure enough, it soon creeps out for another munch. Only this time, it makes the mistake of lingering. more like it. It hung around just long enough to give me a shot then and I've managed to nail it. Here's another rat that was bold enough to venture out by daylight and paid the price. This time it's a fidgety one taken at range on the farm. And it's not just avian pests that are enjoying a free meal on the farm. Rats have also muscled in. That was a bit of a bonus. Spotted that rat feeding in the corner there, crept in position, whacked it over with a headshot. Brilliant start. 
another surprise for me now. Here I'm waiting it out in ambush for rabbits when one pops out unexpectedly. Not from the area I'm covering, but along the hedgerow that I'm using for concealment. I'm not usually one for taking long shots. I prefer to get in as close as I possibly can. But here's a rare long range rabbit, taken in the dark with the night sight and the FAC rated Daystate Mark IV. I eventually pick up something else with the night sight, and this time it's what we're after. Once again, it's down to the prone position for a steady shot, and I really need the stability of the bipod this time because this is a longer one. Now that is how you want them to drop. I decided not to try and stalk him much closer to that one. It was a bit of a further shot, about 60 metres. So I gave it a bit of hold over. Now it's about as far as I want to push the range, even with this gun and the fact it's fairly windless down in this gully. I don't want to take chancy shots. And it looked like I got that one dead, dead right. It really was lights out. Let's go get it. One thing that has proved extremely challenging with a cameraman in tow is getting to terms with wary wood pigeons. Here's one from a winter roost shooting session when we did manage to catch a few on camera. As the light starts to fade, the roosting action picks up and I've soon got another pigeon in the crosshairs. When it comes to giving us a difficult time, crows really do take some beating and I'm sure a lot of air gun shooters can relate to that. So let's finish up with a crow that we did manage to get in the frame during an exciting dusk session in the woods. Eventually, there it is. I can just about find the pellet a clear flight path to this crow and it pays the price. Some really memorable shots there and we hope there'll be plenty more to come. And now, it's the Airgun Show News. This is the Airgun Show News. There's an update for FAC Airgunners. The firearms application form has slightly changed. Now, they will ask if you've ever been treated for a relevant medical condition. Previously, they asked the more general question of if you have any prescribed illness. Basque said this would remove ambiguity from the process, which is important when making false statements on the form is an offence. Plus, Basque reports there are developments going on in the background that will make it easier for online licensing to come in. Hundreds of shooting grounds and restaurants promoted game meat to the wider public as part of Great British Game Week last week. A range of educational events, dinners and special game menus was designed to highlight everything that's great about rabbit, pigeon and other game meats such as pheasant, partridge and venison. Jack Knott of the Countryside Alliance said the week had been a great opportunity to celebrate game and to promote it to those not yet fortunate enough to experience it. Nominations have now closed for the Countryside Alliance Awards, also known as the Rural Oscars. And it's a more crowded field than ever with more than 11,000 nominations made across all the categories. Next up, the Alliance will announce the regional shortlists for local food and drink, Village Shop, Britain's Best Butcher, Rural Enterprise and Britain's Best Pub. And finally, the latest issue of Egg and Shooter magazine is out now. This issue brings you the gear of the year with all of the best buys in the egg world from the last 12 months. There's also a four-way NV comparison and a review of Virac's latest synthetic stocked rifle. As if that wasn't enough, the mag also comes with a free 48-page guide to egg and hunting, all for the same cover price as normal. 
pick up a copy in Good News Agents or subscribe now at myfavoritemagazines.co.uk. That was the Egg and Show News. With winter upon us, I thought I'd share a few of my cold weather hunting tips. And the first one is dressing for the weather. Now, obviously you want a decent jacket to shield you from the wind and the rain, but in my opinion, it's the layers that you wear beneath that jacket that make the biggest difference when it comes to keeping warm in cold conditions. It's nothing for me to wear a long-sleeved vest, a cotton shirt, a lightweight fleece, and sometimes even a heavyweight fleece beneath my main hunting jacket. Now, all of those layers do a brilliant job of trapping in your body heat. And if you get too hot, you can always take off one of those under layers and stuff it into your bag. The last thing you want is cold, wet feet. So I usually opt for a pair of rubber boots. Unless I know I'm going to need to be stalking very quietly, in which case I'll switch over to lace-ups. Although that said, it's surprising just how stealthily you can stalk in a decent pair of rubber boots. Now, the best boots to wear for winter shooting are the ones with a neoprene lining which give you an extra layer of insulation. And I'll usually add an extra pair of thick socks to that. One thing to watch out for is that your boots are big enough not to feel tight when you've got that extra pair of socks on. Tight boots will restrict your circulation and that's going to result in cold feet. When it comes to keeping my head warm, I like to wear a fleece hat that I can pull right down over my ears. I've had this one for years and it's got the added advantage of a peak that casts some shade over my face and just helps to keep my eyes hidden. I don't think this particular version is available anymore, but Quiet Wear makes a very similar hat that's reversible. One thing you really don't want when you're out shooting is fingers that are numb with the cold. Now I've used numerous different types of gloves over the years, but I'm currently getting on really well with these ones from McWet. The material that they're made from gives really good trigger feel and excellent grip whether wet or dry. These ones are from the Climatech range and they've got an extra thick layer along the back for improved insulation. And I've gone for the long cuff version which just gives an added degree of protection. When it comes to choosing areas to target, don't neglect the grain feeders if you happen to share your ground with a pheasant shoot. Pest species, especially grey squirrels, will make regular visits to these feeders during cold weather because they know they provide an easy food source at a time of year when natural pickings are becoming scarce. Find a hiding place within range of a feeder that's being targeted and you should get a few shots, especially either just after dawn or just before dusk when squirrels tend to feed particularly hard during cold weather. If there aren't any pheasant feeders on your woodland chute, you can always make a feeding station of your own and load it with grain or, better still, peanuts. Squirrels can't resist peanuts at any time of year, but they go absolutely mad for them in the winter because there isn't much else around for them to eat. Set up a peanut feeding station in the right place and it'll give a massive boost to your grey squirrel control. You need to be comfortable for any cold weather ambush and a beanbag seat certainly makes static hunting a lot less arduous. Apart from giving you something comfortable to sit on, it also creates a very welcome layer of insulation between your backside and the cold, damp ground. And that's going to make a big difference while you're waiting patiently for your quarry to arrive. Another simple accessory that can really add to the enjoyment of cold weather sessions is a vacuum flask. Fill it with soup or tea and you can treat yourself to a hot brew between shots. It doesn't sound like much, but it can give a real boost to your spirits, often enough to make the difference between packing up and heading for home or hanging around to enjoy the best of the sport. My final tip is to stick around until it gets dark. Grey squirrels tend to become very active towards the end of the day and wood pigeons will fly back to their roosts as the light starts to fade. Later still, the crows will return to their roosting grains where they're usually a lot less wary than they are out on the open field. 
follow those earlier simple tips on keeping warm to avoid getting cold and miserable and missing out on that magical final hour. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, do take a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun membership. And if you're stuck for Christmas gift ideas for an airgunning loved one, have a look at Airgun Shooter Magazine's festive subscription deals, offering a discount of up to 40%. For more information, go to the link on the video description.